If you still have Thanksgiving leftovers, it's time. Throw it out. Run It Back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up. Good Monday morning and welcome to Run It Back. I just want to introduce everyone. First of all, happy late Thanksgiving. Hope everyone enjoyed it. We're all a little bit fatter. Uh, Stadium Insider, Sham Sharania with us. Chandler Parsons, Eddie Gonzalez. And guys, we're just going to jump right in because we had a long weekend of basketball and the Dallas Mavericks, don't look now, they're not very good. At least not at the moment. They've lost four straight. They're 9 and 10, sitting 11th in the West, Chandler. At this point, your level of concern for this team is what? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been concerned with them, you know, pretty much from jump. I think even early on when they were winning games, Luca's usage rate coming out of the, you know, playing for his national team was way too high, and they got they won some games, but now it's clearly catching up to them. He's, you know, their other players are frustrated. I think, you know, the Jalen Brunson deal, I think, is going to haunt them for quite some time. He was that secondary ball handler that could kind of initiate the offense for them. Um, Luke is not really this physical specimen that can handle this type of load throughout a whole season. So you can kind of see him falling off a little bit. The, uh, the end of games, they're getting a little sloppy for them. This is an interesting team because I think the only thing they can do really is, is make a move like they usually try to do. But uh, I'm concerned. I'm concerned with their roster. I'm concerned with the level of talent they've surrounded Luca with. Uh, I'm really concerned with their end of game situations. Th- this team, uh, you know, they have a, a they have a player like Luca that they have to maximize and take advantage of, and I just don't think they've done that yet. And uh, it's clearly starting to show with with uh, you know these losses that are adding and piling up. Yeah, I'm concerned as well. Um, you know, this style of basketball concerns me in general, <laughs> and, and they call it heliocentric, right? The guy who just pounds the ball all game and 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 racks up all the stats and usually gets some wins but we've only seen this work on a high level really once with lebron and he required a absolute elite secondary ball handler first with Dwayne Wade, then with Kyrie Irving. Uh, the next closest thing you could say to that style of ball, actually winning a title, actually making deep playoff runs, is is Giannis, and Giannis isn't exactly the step-back three guy. So, yeah, you have to build this really weird team where most guys are standing around, they're not involved, they have to D up because this guy isn't going to defend that much. And th- they end up with bad contracts with Davis Bertans, with Tim Hardaway Jr., they take a spurs on uh, Christian Wood, and he's expiring, and maybe he's their best trade asset at the moment, but he's one of their best players. They almost can't afford to lose him. It's, you know, you cobble together this weird roster. They defend it really well last year. They're not defending as well this year. Yeah, there's plenty of reason to be concerned, even in the jumbled-up Western Conference right now. Shams, what are yeah, you thinking? And this team... This team only works if the guys around Luka Doncic can step up. And last year, you had that. Jalen Brunson, of course, played a big part. But I'm just looking at their three-point percentages. Luka himself is only shooting 30% from three-point range. But then you have Tim Hardaway Jr. He's at 29%. Reggie Bullock, 28%. Maxi Kleber, 31%. There's only three guys in the rotation shooting 40% or higher from three-point range. That's Spencer Dinwiddie, Christian Wood, and Josh Green. So if the shooters around him, like last year, are not going to step up, this team is going to be what it is right now. Now, which is very, very mediocre, middle of the pack. Um, and a guy that I feel like needs to get probably more opportunity is Spencer Dinwiddie. He's at around 13 shots a game so far. He's he's played efficiently from the field, around 47% from the field, uh, 42% from three-point range. You want to see a guy like that, Christian Wood. Other players' usage rates go up because, like Chandler said, the style that they're going with right now with Luka Doncic, his use rate has to be by far and away the number one in the league. And so I think they need to get other guys and increase usage rates, especially of guys like Spencer Dinwiddie, who has shown that he can ball handle, he can make players around him better. It is nuts because I feel like this is a team that we don't, no one talks about. And this is why. I, I don't think the expectations are high as the season goes on because of all those reasons. But Shams, they got to do something, right? I mean, you can't waste Luka Doncic. Are there any upgrades that they're making? Yes, yeah, sources tell me the Mavericks are going to sign Kemba Walker to a deal, and he's a four-time All-Star. He has not played all season. He was waived by the Pistons, but they're going to bring him in, and they were looking at him prior to his release in Detroit when he was talking to teams. He was talking to Charlotte at one point. 
Um, but I, I think now they know that they need that extra ball handler. Kemba Walker, let's see what he has left in the tank. They're going to wave uh, uh, Facu, uh, Facu Campazzo. So we'll see kind of where this goes for um, for the Mavericks and if Kemba Walker has anything left in the tank that he can provide. But if he does, and if you can even show glimpses of what he showed in Boston and in New York, this gives them at least a third ball handler that they can really rely on uh, throughout and especially late in games. You, you know what's interesting here with this is they have this star player in Luka Doncic and they just got rid of his boy, Kambazo. Last year, they <laughs> get rid of his boy, Boban. He was super close with Salah Mejri. They get rid of him. So I don't know if there's anything here, but this is three guys that I know for a fact were Luca's best friends on the team. And they just keep shipping these dudes out. And they're not huh. getting him the talent he needs. They're not getting him that second player. He finally had someone. He finally had somewhat of a, of a Robin to his Batman and Jalen Brunson. And they let him walk. Uh, this is going to get frustrating for Luca. There's already media asking him in five years, what if, are you going to leave? If not, so it's definitely like swirling around there. Um, but this is interesting. I think Kemba, you know, we'll see what version we get of him, but they clearly are in panic mode and know that Luca desperately needs help. Yeah, and this is a guy who wants to win. When you watch him play, you know he has competitive spirit. When you watch him play overseas or his national team, you know he wants to win. He wants to win championships. He's used to winning championships. He won them in EuroLeague. He wants to win them in the NBA. He knows that's the ultimate crowning achievement. I I, I want to push back a little bit on Shams. I think there was high expectations for this team. They went to the Western Conference Finals last year. They felt like they made additions that made sense. Everybody knew them losing Jalen Brunson was going to hurt, but I think people still expected better than what they got. Luka was the runaway MVP favorite. And maybe he still is, right? Maybe they 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 climbed to 500 and better throughout the season. His numbers are incredible. He's leading the league in scoring. He's going to lead the league in scoring as long as he stays healthy. But I do think there was some expectations, and they're failing to meet them. And at some point, they're going to start scrambling. I mean, they're scrambling now. Kemba did not look great last time we saw him. He's been dealing with knee issues for years now. And it, I don't think this is the fix. I love Kemba. I think when he's right, he can add a ton to this team. This isn't the fix they're looking for. They, they, like, like, like Sam said, they have to shoot better. Those guys have to shoot better. If they're going to play this like martyr ball, as my guy Sam Esfandari would say, they're going to get wide open shots. And if those guys don't make them, it's their fault. When they do make them, it's going to be Luca's fault. But that's just the nature mm -hmm. of the game. Um, but if they're going to be bricking all day, then they're not. <laughs> they're not right for that team. But you guys I hit on the head too. This this team, they went to the Western Conference Finals. So the expectation for Luca, for the fans, for everybody around, you know, this franchise, the bar is set high, and you never want to do that with a younger team and then take a step back. I just feel like that's right. where they are right now. And I feel like, you know, they gotta make a move in my eyes. I, I think look, it's one thing to have expectations, especially fans, they always do, we always do. It's just not realistic, it feels like, because of what they've done or who they've let go. And the rest of the Western Conference seems to be waking up at the worst possible time for the Mavericks. <laughs> but Christian Wood was supposed to be the addition that would help, um, at least in the offseason. And he's frustrated. He doesn't like his playing time. He's not out there in closing minutes. He said so. So I guess the question is, uh, are you guys okay with the fact that he has publicly voiced his opinion on frustration? Chandler, I mean, like, this is... This doesn't happen all the time, but are you okay with it when it does? I mean, listen, I don't think you ever, this early, you want to go public. This is just a bad look. I don't think Christian Wood has ever been kind of a high character guy. So th th this kind of makes sense coming out of him. But yeah, you know, he's in a contract year. He's trying to get a bag and he's clearly their second best player on most nights. His percentages are insane. He's knocking down threes. He did start the second half last night and came out hot in the third quarter. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I get the frustration. I, I think this is more of an in-house thing that should be handled. But, yeah, he came there to be, you know, second fiddle to Luca, And he did, you know, during media day, he seemed as if he didn't know he was even coming off the bench. So this got started off on the wrong foot. And to his credit, he's played very, very well in limited opportunity for whatever reason, you know, that is. Um, I just think Mavs kind of know this isn't a permanent fix. This isn't going to be Luca's you know, secondary guy forever. Um, but you would think with them struggling and him coming off the bench, I get why he's frustrated. He knows he could be doing more. He thinks he could be doing more and the team is losing. So 
Uh, I definitely see why, but to go public, to go publicly already, he's already has a couple spats with the media. I just don't think it's ever a good look. This is a guy who's played on seven teams in his career so far. He's only right. 26 years old. Uh, yeah, maybe complain privately. It's 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 a lot. He, from the moment he got on this team, he's been complaining, and you kind of understand why he's been on so many teams. Like yeah, now he that. now he feels like he's got a reason with them losing and everything. So now it's it's <laughs> it's only going to get worse with this guy. It's not. And it, it isn't going to get better. Mm, Can, well, I, they, I mean, maybe they move him. Maybe that's that's. I I don't know. I have. Maybe it's just because I'm here. I just don't have any expectations for that Mavericks team as constructed. But the Western Conference, we mentioned people are starting to heat up. A team that I guess some maybe were worried about, but in all honesty, they've earned enough equity not to be worried. They beat the Wolves 137-114 yesterday. Um, We're done, right, Chandler? Like, we don't need to ask anymore. Are we worried? Is there something wrong? Are we moving on? Uh, Again, I think they would have loved to get off to a a better start. but what we've all been kind of saying, listen, this is there's a method to their madness. They have way too much experience. They're way too smart. They're trying to get the young guys burned. They're trying to get them involved. And this is valuable minutes that it's going to hopefully pay off come June and come the playoffs. Uh, the Warriors are one of a very few teams that you shouldn't really worry about. And last night, this was the best version of them. You had everybody clicking. Clay and, and Jordan Poole played good together. Draymond was doing all his things. Um, you know, Wiggins was solid. This was a balanced attack where everyone was pretty efficient from the field for the most part. And, and this was a mismatched nightmare for the, for Minnesota. So this, this is the team that, you know, we've, we've grown to, to, you know, see succeed. And this is the team that no one's going to really worry about. Cause you know, they're going to be there at the end. The end, there was a, a little mini uh, tea party. Draymond got a technical for celebrating on the court. Steph, uh, in a mocking fashion, seemingly, then gets teed up. Looked like a little, a moment of solidarity between these two guys, Eddie. I, but see, the chemistry, I don't think it was worried between those two. It was more Jordan Poole. But is this a good sign for what's going on behind the doors with this team? <laughs> a- arrogant season is back in, uh, in San Francisco. <laughs> Uh, look, the, this is this has been this team forever. This has been this team when when nobody <laughs> believed in them. Uh, no, this is fun. I, I like this. It's <laughs> you, you know, is the camaraderie back? Sure. I mean, they, they still have issues to iron out. They 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 punched that guy in his face, and the whole world saw. But oh, uh, look, th- this is what the Timberwolves are doing to teams. They're just making them feel great out there. Uh, the, the, the Warriors are fine. They're they're three games out of the one seed, as crazy as that sounds. They still have defensive issues, but they were always looking towards May and June. They, they, they were never worried about what's going on right now. So, yeah, uh, but this is fun. I, I, I will say it's it's interesting to see how much these guys feel themselves when things are going their way. And then the yeah. minute they get like a bad tweet, they, 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 you know, they absolutely lose their mind. So it's fun. And Steph Curry, I love him to death. It's hard to say anything bad about Steph Curry, but the dude gets away with murder on the celebrating <laughs> on this, on, on all the antics, all the tactics, not many players would get as many chances or that he'd be teed up way more if he wasn't Steph Curry. So I got to say all the hoopla, all the celebrating, they do a lot and there's really never really consequences for them. So I'm actually, I was, I was happy to see the ref kind of check them. How about Draymond pointing to the baseline? Like, like he was not six feet in front of it when he was doing right? the dance. Yeah, like when you did the dance, that's a different spot than when the whistle was blown. Just remember this though, <laughs> when the media starts talking a little negative, not to get so salty with the media. That's fair. Old school, new school. Shams. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I love the camaraderie. I'm for that. Um, but I think the biggest thing for the Warriors turning it around is really early in the year, what we saw was the balance of the youth and the, and the older guys, right? Now you're starting to see Draymond, Clay, Steph get back to their rhythm. And James Wiseman, he's in the G League. He's been kind of you know, brought away from the team. You have Jonathan Kaminga. He's finding an organic you know, niche in that rotation, whereas before it was like, is Steve Kerr just going to really force him onto the floor? Is he going to just force him in a minute? And I think overall it's been a balance for everyone, the organization for Steve Kerr, to find a way to organically blend this mix of, of young players and vets because I think at the beginning of the year you saw a lot of it was forced um, we're not, we're now they're kind of back where they were last season a, a little bit in terms of it's it's organic when Kaminga plays it's organic minutes it's not really force fed minutes anymore. 
Chandler, what's a weakness? I mean, if you have to point something out with this team, what is it? Uh, I mean, it's Clay. Clay Thompson's got to be Clay Thompson. He, he, him, and Draymond have to do what they did last night. Uh, they have to find a ways to be effective. They have to find a ways to impact the game and and do exactly what they did last night. Clay's got to take good shots. He's going to knock them down when he's open. Uh, they have to find a way for Clay and Jordan Poole to kind of coexist. Steph is going to do what Steph does, and for the most part, Wiggins has been very, very solid and their second best player. I'm not worried about them. But it's Clay Thompson. It's keeping him healthy. It's keeping him, you know, in rhythm, and guys like Jordan Poole that are able to coexist with all, with all these other stars and be able to produce. But and if they do that, yeah, that that's what makes them, you know, a championship contender in my eyes. Yeah, I think they need to get their defense up to par, up to their standard. They'll spend all season dealing with that. They're, that's going to be a constant for them is is figuring out defensive lineups that work with Jordan Poole on the floor. He, he's, he was a weakness on in that, in that aspect last year in the playoffs, he continues to be that this year. He's one of the worst net ratings in the league. Uh, so that's going to be an issue for them, but they will go as their shooting goes. Chandler's right. If, if Clay Thompson is shooting like Clay Thompson, they'll look way better. If Draymond green is facilitating like old Draymond green, they'll look way better. And, and, and it goes from there, but they'll, they'll have to rely on their defense. When when it all when push comes to shove, and that's going to want to be their focus now, and I, I think that's why we're going to see a little bit more of Moody and Kaminga, two athletic guys who get out there and they do defend. Whatever weaknesses they have on offense, they absolutely make up for them on defense. And the thing about having somebody like Stephen Curry is you can have weaknesses on offense when you have that guy. So that that to me will be their focus going forward. It is time now for me to do my job, the part that hurts. Uh, we have to talk about the Lakers in a positive way. So let me get through this. Uh, <laughs> one, four straight, had a nice weekend here in San Antonio. They're five and one over their last six. LeBron has returned. Anthony Davis, however, sat the bench. Um, is this the corner turn that I'm assuming they thought was coming and their fans were hoping was coming, Eddie? Uh, how many how many Spurs games do they have left? Do they have. I mean, shit, literally, I have literally like, seen them. I've seen them three times in eight days. Three times to see the team I dislike the most in all of sports is some sort of torture, and must have been a bad person in a previous life. But anyways, that's my rant, Eddie. Uh, yes, they have had the Spurs like ninety times, <laughs> and it's a good it's a good stretch for them. I mean, they're going to play some hard people later, but have you seen enough to think? All right, maybe there's something here. They they needed this, and they're getting healthier. They have Schroeder back. They have Thomas Bryant, who's you know been uneven, but it's nice to have that body there as well. AD is look like a monster, and obviously they got LeBron back. We knew that this season would turn around quite a bit. They have no incentive to tank and lose. They do have some guys. They do have talent, and as the the league is it's in a standstill right now. The the standings are so jumbled up <laughs> one through eight in the West is, so, is, is separated by like one and a half games. They have a chance. Um, this is a nice role. I think the camaraderie has changed for them as well. Like we're being body language doctor here, but they just winning cures all right. But they just look like they're in a better place. We're not hearing about as much drama. Russ has been slotted into a role that absolutely makes sense for him. And he's continuing to, oh. to thrive there. Uh, yeah. They, they just look better like body language now and i guess the spurs will do that to you it's nice to play the spurs hey, twice in three hey. nights you better watch it <laughs> somehow i'll figure out a way to mute you <laughs> no yeah, but you I, know what I, 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 that's a good point yeah, yeah i agree with eddie looking at their schedule i mean every good team they've played they've lost uh, they they beat <laughs> they beat the spurs three times and they beat the pistons basically like they're like they they're not a good team, but I like, again, they have no incentive to tank. I do think it's promising the way Anthony Davis has been playing. And then you get that same type of performance from LeBron when he can, when he got back. Uh, now the trick is to, to get them to do that together, continue to, to have guys like Lonnie Walker and Austin Reeves uh, produce and kind of, you know, play off those guys. But yeah, I mean, anytime you can get on a streak like this in a season is great. And, uh, you know, I, it's interesting to me to see when their schedule gets a little harder, which is coming up here. Uh, it'll be interesting, but I, I don't, I still, I just don't see it with this team. I, I don't think they're very good. I don't think they have enough shooting. I don't think they have enough depth. Thomas Bryan and Schroeder do help a little bit. It gives them a little bit more, but, you know, I, LeBron and AD have to do what they're doing on the floor at the same time now for them to win games. I just don't see that happening. 
matchups. I'll, I'll give the Lakers credit for this. Like last year, they lost like 10 games to bad teams that they had no business losing. This year, under Darvin Ham, I have to give them credit. They are taking advantage of teams like the Spurs that are coming in and, and they're winning these games. So you have to give Darvin Ham that credit that he's able to have them prepared against these bad teams that they're supposed to win. But I think the way that Dennis Schroeder and we Russell Westbrook are being used, it, it makes Patrick Beverly's role, who's been suspended, mm -hmm. it makes his role very interesting moving forward. But it's also been curious, their offensive efficiency has gone from uh, you know one of the worst in the league to now middle of the pack. So you're starting to see their numbers climb up they're still the second worst three-point shooting team to the Knicks um so shout out to the Knicks for that but I think uh, right now the Lakers uh, you know they're, they're beating up on bad teams but this is something that they weren't doing last season shout, shout out to the Knicks uh there was a moment in the game here we go uh Zach Collins Russell Westbrook um somehow Russell Westbrook's head met with Zach Collins elbow came down a couple times now in fairness that it, it was right on the hairline everybody knows that's a super bleedy spot uh but the blood started to pour immediately LeBron turned into a doctor and Zach Collins was handed a flagrant two and ejected from the game Chandler obviously the hometown fans thought maybe a flagrant one this seemed a little excessive Ooh. what did you think because if there was no blood I don't think this happens, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the the you know the effect afterwards with him just gushing blood made it seem Gosh. a lot worse than it was. <laughs> I had to watch this a couple times to see where he got him, what part of his body hit his face. This wasn't like a violent, intentional. You know, he got him in the air, and to be honest with you, Russ tried to get him in the air and all the contact. So I, I don't think Zach Collins did this on purpose by any means you almost have to give him a flagrant too, just because of the scene afterwards and the reaction. But I don't honestly think this was that dirty. He was in the air and Russ kind of jumped into him and there's nothing really Zach Collins could have, could have done, but yeah, I, I, he was bleeding pretty bad and they, they had to throw a flagrant two there. Yeah. I think, look, <laughs> you get that much blood. You're probably getting kicked out of the game, <laughs> no matter what they say about the eighties or whatever. But, uh, when you jump in the air and you swipe down like that, when you get caught in the air and you come down, you, you know bad things are usually going to happen unless you <laughs> land right on the ball. But he got him right smack in the middle of the forehead with that big ass elbow. So I mean, I, I guess you know I get why Russ was upset, but it always cracks me up. Like these are semi normal plays. I know it went well wrong, but you know you get all mad because you got hit in the head. But like, yo, you duck under him to get yeah. fouled like that was the point of what you did yeah I, I don't know flagrant two seemed crazy in in the moment there was a pretty bad flagrant net spacers as well like two guys just bumped into each other and they got flagrant and it clacks but yeah i mean it, it, it's whatever it you have no to it's not the blood. it's not whatever <laughs> But it's that's what, this is this isn't a, <laughs> this isn't a defenseless player. This isn't a guy going up for a layup and no. getting clubbed. But this is exactly what Russell tried to do. He tried to get him in the air and he tried to get to the free throw line. So I I don't see it honestly. I wish they would have gave him a flagrant one. I think they would have if he didn't bleed out. Yeah, the I mean, it's the first of all not our fault. He's a bleeder. Okay, that's a weird spot. But also, <laughs> it's interesting because they made up immediately. Like, across the court, Zach was like, I was just trying to go for the ball. Russell's like, okay. It was just such a bizarre world moment. They'd already lost uh, Jeremy Sohan and Pirtle, and I'm just making excuses because I'm sad. Okay, let's go to the Clippers, <laughs> and we're sticking to the Western <laughs> Conference. Uh, look, the Clippers are without Kawhi. They're without PG, but don't tell if it's the Zubots that. 31 points, 29 rebounds led his team over the Pacers. Um... Not bad. Pretty impressive. First player with 30, 25, and 80% shooting in a game since just Shaq, you know, back in 2004. Chandler, what, what's the deal with Zubats? What got into I him? I mean, yeah, th he. this is an unbelievable game. This is a historic game. He dominated every aspect. So efficient. Uh, I will say, before this game, there's, you know, all these these Miles Turner, the Clippers are interested, and this dude went out there and dominated <laughs> So he put, you know, I think he took that personal. I think he took this on. And I mean, 31 and 29. I wish he didn't foul out. I wish he could have had a 30 and 30. But this was an insane game. And and I'm happy for him. This one game I went to 
was Cleveland and, and LA. And for whatever reason, he just is so much bigger than these guys on the court. Like, I don't know, maybe not a game like this, but he should be dominating games more often, especially against smaller teams and really making them pay. But uh, this was a monster performance and I'm glad he did it with all these, you know, rumors swirling that they're going after another big guy. Not the greatest show for Miles Turner, right? One of the most Oof. talked about names in the league for Oops. a trade. Everybody wants them. The Lakers want them. Everybody's team wants them. Uh, yo, shout out to, to, to Zoo because that's kind of like what you feel like a big fella should be doing in today's league. The league has gotten crazy small. He, he's a very specific, almost extinct type big. And this is there for them if, if they want it. I seen Nurkic this week. He, he, he played the Nets last night. He bullied them a bit. I, these guys, you know, you see uh, Jonas in uh, in New Orleans as well. They can have these nights. I I just know there's a rebound in the second quarter. Like he's pissed about right now because right? He, had, he was right on the cusp of that. But yeah, nice to see. Yes. He's had some pretty big performances. He's had big playoff performances. And you know, as you get deeper and, and guys can kind of dribble him out of the series, he 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 has to fall back a little bit. But. He's a difference maker for that team, and there's a reason why they locked him up with some with some nice money, and, and kept him out there. Shams, 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 Shams. Yeah, Michelle, yeah. You know what's Michelle, coming. <laughs> your Lakers had Zubac. He, sh- he he probably would have been their starting center on the championship team. He probably would have <laughs> still been there. They traded him for Mike Muscala in 2019 at the trade deadline. <laughs> I think they also sent a draft pick as well to the Clippers. So talk about Oof. an in city, in rival. You know, trade him to your rival. Now, this guy's going to be a stalwart for that organization. And like like Eddie said and like Chandler said, like this is this is a team in the Clippers that has been looking for bigs. I think more a backup big than anything. I don't think they're trying to really replace Zubac, especially after last night. I, I don't know why you would. <laughs> uh, I, by the way, I heard you, Shams, and I'm noting everything, all the hate today. Uh, taking a quick break. Coming up, Shams will be back with the latest on Gordon Hayward and the weekend's best dunks. All of that when Run It Back returns. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. All right. Season debut set for Nets forward TJ Warren. It's just in, Shams. Okay, when can we expect it? Hopefully some good news here for Brooklyn Nets fans and Eddie. Warren is ex- yeah, Warren is expected to make his his season debut, his return to the floor on Friday against the Toronto Raptors. Michelle, he has not played since December. 2020s and multiple foot procedures this is a guy who in the bubble was one of the best players in 2020 average over 20 points for the season uh he had he had 50 point games in the bubble like he was on another level but unfortunately foot injury set him back the Nets signed him to a minimum in the offseason and there's a hope and an expectation and and you know that, that he's able to find a role in that lineup initially coming off the bench can score because they definitely need help in that 3-4 area right now uh, in their rotation. That is a long, long period of time without playing. Uh, of course, we get some Gordon Hayward news. I feel like Gordon Hayward news in the last few years, it's never great. Uh, Shams, what's the latest on the extent of his injury? He has a fracture in his left shoulder. He's, he's going to miss multiple weeks here, I'm told. And I, I think the f- most fascinating development actually is what his, his wife, Robin, uh, put out there over the weekend, which was that he's played on the injury, uh, you know, for a few games. This is an injury that the team has was initially withholding, uh, according to what, what his wife put out there. And I, I, I'm told it's also believed that he played on this injury for multiple games uh, before they made the diagnosis. And now he will be out an indefinite period of time. And this is a Hornets season that is injury riddled. It's starting to slip away. We'll see as the trade deadline gets near you know, which guys could they move? But this probably puts Gordon Hayward in, in a difficult position if he was ever going to be traded at all. He seems to have that curse. Um, just can't can't be healthy for a long period of time, Chandler. But it, it, the claim is that he was made to play with the injury is what his wife was claiming. Have you ever been made to play through an injury? Listen, I wouldn't say he was made to play. That seems extreme. Uh, did they maybe encourage him to play through injury? Have they had enough with, you know, him being out, missing time, their team losing, him making a lot of money? This would be a situation where I could see that happening. And, you know, there's a lot of drama going around this team with Bridges and Booknight, now Gordon Hayward's wife. Uh, it, they're struggling. They're You know, LaMelo was out. Um 
but the idea of a team making him play is, is hard for me to believe, especially a guy like Gordon Hayward, who's, you know, a smart guy and an older guy. Uh, there was a time in my career where a team doctor told me that my injury couldn't get worse and I continued to play and my injury got a lot worse and that guy got fired. So there, there are certain things like that that do happen, but nowadays it's, it's load management. It's how do you help the player? Like when I was in Atlanta, the medical director, Chelsea, their whole medical staff, they were unbelievable at protecting the players almost too much. So it's hard for me to believe they made him play. Uh, but there's definitely things that go on with injuries where, like I said, I was told my injury was not going to get worse and it, got very, very worse and kind of started spiraling and what happened with my knees. But uh, this is this is kind of pillow talk gone public, I think. Ooh. <laughs> All right, Eddie, sticking with that. What do you think? Bad luck for, for family members, whether it be wives, brothers, moms. Do you like that? Yeah, like, I understand the frustration. I mean, we've had some kind of infamous Twitter accounts, Mama Draymond and, and, and on and on. And <laughs> that are kind of just in voice their opinions and, and let it be known. And I know from the player stance, it's like, Hey, I can't tell my mom what to do and what not to do. She's a grown <laughs> right? ass woman. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think in most instances, yeah, it's, it's, you know, you do bear a little bit of responsibility. It's somebody connected to one of the players to not do that. If, if you can. And, and I understand there's frustration. We all watch the games and get frustrated with our favorite players, not getting, preferential treatment or whatever, but look, far be it for me to tell Robin Hayward what to do and what not to do. Uh, with, without situations like this, we wouldn't have Aisha Curry telling us the league is rigged and all these special <laughs> moments to me that live near and dear in my Twitter heart. But yeah, I think in general, I mean, me, myself personally, I'm definitely more muted than I've imagined people would think I am because, you know, I, I don't want, I don't want, last thing I want is Kevin on a podium going, Yo, so the thing Eddie said and then having to answer for me joking <laughs> on Twitter, but, but no. yeah, I mean, I, I think in general, yeah, let's just let the players handle it. And he, he's, he's out now. I mean, he is out and, and he right. was diagnosed with his injury. So like, what does that help at this point? Uh, nobody, apparently. Uh, Shams, as always, thank you. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. We still got some families and some people who have families. <laughs> These men all have families, and somebody didn't seem to care over the weekend. We're going to start things off with uh, Chris Stops Porzingis. Man, what a weird career that guy's had. But in this particular case, he gets embarrassed by Bam. Ada, bio. We're going to roll that tape. <laughs> you guys can watch the talk. I mean, I hope we are. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Let me see. That's a weird. That's a tough spot guarding the roller yeah. like that. You know, KP's yeah. a monster. Though. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll get it back at some point. Yeah, he gets stuck here trying to play both. I will say, Bam has been playing so much better. But I, this isn't like a poster, right? This isn't like a body. This is a great pass. He kind of got caught in between here, but it's, it's honestly more impressive that he caught it with one hand and kept it in one hand. I do like that. Yeah, one hand always looks pretty cool. amazing catch by Bam. Yeah, yeah, that's at the top of the box. My goodness. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. How about this one? SGA. I do love an ankle breaker. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's fair. Ooh, this was dirty that too. Was there, <laughs> yeah. What did was there like? There's there's minimum there's minimal push off there, right? Or does he get him with the? Uh, he gets him a little, mean, bit. Little, a little, little bit. Little chicken wing, little elbow. But usually you get like a full blown stiff arm. That's pretty nice. That's. It's pretty almost nice. like he kind of falls after the. Fa it's like a weird late. Re Look at that. It's delayed. Whoops. Like he yeah, he tries to land on two feet and just goes down right here. Oh, <laughs> Oops. And either way, it looks bad, no matter what. No matter how he got there. How about Miles Turner uh, with a Jaden McDaniels moment? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, oh, this okay. is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good try. Good try, Jaden, but no. That's nasty. Yeah, but no. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish he would have done this on Zubots when he was having thirty-one and twenty-nine. Oh. But this yeah. was yeah. he got the shot. At this point, you gotta go. And McDaniel just gets At this point, you gotta caught. do the, like, you gotta go with the lazy swipe at that point because he's that's he's he's booming that. Just just you know, why get posted? I don't know. 
<laughs> He's coming in hot. I might just get out of the way, quite frankly. This is the worst yeah. situation you can be in, by the way, as a defender. You're the help guy, you're the low right? guy. That's the worst spot you could be in. There's nowhere the to go. The smaller guy, oh, that's tough. Yeah. Well, here we go. Oh. Um, okay, I can't yeah. wait to hear what you have to say about this. I mean, I guess this is a pretty bad spot too. He, he listen, you, you, you can't ever, you can't ever continue to back up when this man is coming at you full speed. You have to meet him damn near at the free throw line because he can do this. He will take off from one step inside the free throw line, and he will put it on your head. So this is never going. Yeah, he's got to almost do the reach down too and just try and give a foul here and make him earn too. But you can't keep Oof. backing up with Giannis. There's such Poor a moment nerd, of like defeat. On Nurkic too. It's just he's like, oh, I can't, that's it. Nurk bent so well, like you know, what I mean? he he did what best he could do, and it was just nothing. You know, Giannis <laughs> was an elbow above him, like it just didn't matter. Look at that. That's, he wasn't even close tough. to blocking that shot. <laughs> no, he not even blocking Chandler. <laughs> and, like, yeah. and he knew right. it too. By look at his face right there, like, uh, what am I doing? Why am I here? Cat just, just, just on Mason Plumley. You're right. Let's just end Oof. it now. It's over. Okay. Okay. There's my MVP. Oh my God! <laughs> See, there Plumlee he is. even got Plumley even got caught in no man's land here. He he went to block this and then realized, oh shit, and didn't even keep going. I'm I'm giving him no credit for this because of that uniform. That's that's gross, right? What, I don't. I do not that like AAU this uniform. uniform they're wearing. This is it's crazy. So bizarre. I also Damn. didn't really like the Portland ones either. I don't know. How about, like the the how, about the Char how about the Charlotte uh, jerseys, Michelle? <laughs> yeah, well, those are obviously the best jerseys in the league. And the fact that they're not even going to back down and put them away is my favorite part about it. We have uh, to stand on these. They spent all the money. Somebody came up with a brilliant idea. Time for a break. Um, when we come back, which player does Giannis think could be better than him? And is it time for Jazz fans to panic? We'll be back. Olden Polonies was one of the tweets of the weekend, basically telling all the guys in the NBA that the more you sit and skip, that's the more you're going to get hurt or injured, that you have to build up your pain tolerance, and that he actually finished second in rebounds with a broken hand in 1993. God, I love a good get-off-my-lawn moment. It makes me have life, Chandler. Um, what do you think about this? Is it as simple as these guys need to build up pain tolerance? No, and I can't stand shit like this from older players. I think it's it's so salty. It's so sour. Uh, look, are there some soft NBA players now? Yes, but the idea of that these guys are that the rules changed, the load management changed, the salaries have changed. So, yeah, a guy's not going to play on you know a sore knee when he's making $45 million a year. That's above his head. That comes from management. That comes from the owners. So, are there soft dudes in the league for sure? But the idea of this tweet to all NBA players need to build up a, a pain tolerance is, is, is silly and it's ridiculous. And he looks sour in my eyes. I mean, <laughs> Sacramento Kings legend OP. Nobody remembered he was second in rebounds. Sorry, Aww. buddy. Uh, <laughs> whatever year that was, we we may remember him from the movie Eddie getting called a black hole. That's about it. Uh, no, this is not. This is not true. Like this is. He's not a doctor. What is he talking about? <laughs> My thing with this is the style of play in the league is so different now. Guys are asked to move so much now. And, and so quickly, even just defense, if Olden Polonese played today and had to cover as many screen and rolls and had to close out in as many shooters, he would be a little more sympathetic on everybody's feet and, knee and legs hurting. But no, this is this is insane. Like, yo, if you guys are hurt, you guys are hurt. It's 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 fine. I like my foot hurt the other day. I almost didn't get on Zoom. Like I, there's no way. Don't go out there and play on a partially torn ACL, Kawhi. It's fine. OK, but that's different. I mean, I think. I would think he's, well, maybe he's not. Maybe he is talking about broken things, but I thought it was more like just maybe the little things, let that go. But I don't know, but it's the pain tolerance topic that's got us going. <laughs> I just love it. Get off my line. Because oh, here's the deal. I, I had never heard of this next thing until the weekend, right? MMA <laughs> basketball. Yeah, it, exactly what this is right here. It, they're in some sort of, it's not an octagon per se, but... Like the glass shatters. I, what is happening here, guys? Do we like this? <laughs> I got to be honest with you. I, I've never heard of this either. Uh, I mean, is it, is it entertaining and is it fun to watch? 
<laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, I don't think any good basketball player is ever going to play in this. Right? Uh, no chance. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I would watch it. I think it's I think it's funny that they got a janky backboard. They couldn't even get a real Yeah. <laughs> If this dude's breaking the backboard, can you imagine if NBA players playing in it? Oh, forget it. Yeah, because they don't. None of those guys look over six feet tall, I, unless I'm crazy. Yeah, you know actually, how mad I'd be. You know how mad I'd be if I showed up to see a fight and then I was watching these guys play basketball <laughs> barefoot. Like, barefoot where are the, the matches? Best. Like, where are the fights at? That's yeah, a, that's did a they actually octagon. did they actually punch each other and fight? I don't know. Yeah. Do they leave the glass out? If they play on the glass, then I'm I'm back in. But if yeah. but if they clean the glass up, then it's not even that tough. This is an insane event. Like who knows <laughs> what else they were doing in that ring that night? <laughs> Wait, I don't even. What, what does that That's mean? Crazy. It's I, I love it, and I don't even know where one would find that particular sport. But Giannis um, seems to be very impressed by young Evan Mobley. Actually, said quote. He can be better than me. That's a heck of a statement from Giannis. We know how much he loves Victor, Victor Wimanyama already. So, how high do you think the ceiling is on Mobley, Eddie? Not Giannis. Uh, all due respect to Evan, who the analytic <laughs> crowd loves because of his defense uh -huh. and the the numbers that oh, it's just look. He's a great athletic young player. He's watching him in person move at that size is pretty fascinating. But on offense, he he lacks a ton. But I mean, to Giannis's point. You could have said that about Giannis his second year in the league as well. Uh, I, I don't see him as that type of specimen, but yeah, he'll, he's, he's, he's on a nice path. Yeah, I think he's I think just where he is right now, he's better than Giannis at that age. But I mean, those are those are pretty bold words. But I, I love Evan Mobley. I think he's in the absolute perfect situation with two great guards. He's not even the best big on his team. So he's going to have some games where you know, he has four points, he has six points, but then he's going to have some games where he's just dunking everything and he's got 20 and 20. Uh, I think his ceiling is very high. He reminds me of a young Kevin Garnett. When, when he can start creating a little bit more offensively and get his jumper, this kid is going to be very, very, very good. JB Bickerstaff told me when they drafted him that he is a stud, he's different, he can do it all. And we're kind of starting to see that on some nights and uh, the, the potential is through the roof for this kid. Um. We got a panic button time. I hate that we're doing this because we've been so positive. The world has fallen in love with the Utah Jazz and the story that they're giving us, but they've lost four straight, right? They're three and seven in the last 10. Um, they've gone from first to eight in the Western Conference standings. Chandler, is it panic button time for this team? I'm not necessarily panicking because I didn't expect this in the first place. You know what I mean? Right. Like I think the teams were, I think the fans even were expecting this team to tank and kind of be in that, you know, Victor sweepstakes. And look, I think it's not too late. I think they continue to do this. I think they try and let Lori make the all-star game and have someone represent the jazz in Salt Lake this, this, uh, you know, this February, but this is the jazz that we expected. So I'm not hitting the panic button, but I think they should continue to do this, you know, trade Mike Conley, get off these guys. And, Here we and go. Kind of, you know, kind of, you know, start preparing for the future. Bear to tank. Uh, I'm with Chandler. No panic. They're, they're, they're playing with house money in either direction. A couple tough losses in that stretch too, you know, at overtime down the stretch, the whole nine. Uh, they're fine. They're they're cool. It's yeah. It's you great. can't you can't freak out when they win. You damn sure shouldn't freak out when they lose. That's fair. They were they're way ahead where we thought they'd be. How about the Knicks? Yeah. Nine and 11, 11th in the Eastern Conference. I mean, I feel like this is the uh, perennial question. Panic button on the Knicks, Eddie. <laughs> Here we go. Yes, panic on day one. This isn't a well put together <laughs> team. It's it's. it's it's a bad team. I mean, they, they have to make some moves. And every time I watch Donovan Mitchell make a shot and look amazing in Cleveland, I look at them and I look at the panic button and it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> That's it. Panic button. Always and forever in New York. I feel bad. <laughs> How about Patrick Beverly? The We talked about it a little bit. Uh, he's, he's just low. How about this? The average. Anyone playing at least 20 minutes a game, not named P.J. Tucker. Aw, Chandler. Panic button on Pat Beverly, a.k.a. trade. 
I love that this is his highlight, though. It's not him shooting. It's not him no. scoring. His one highlight that we decided to show was him doing that, which, by the way, is smart because, no, I'm not hitting the panic button because you didn't bring him here to L.A. to score. You didn't bring him to make shots. You brought the other guys that aren't making shots on the team that I'd hit the panic button on. But this is who Patrick Beverly is. This is who he's always been. This is who he always will be. He's the junkyard dog. He attracts winning. So, no, it's not scoring. It's not shooting. Would they like him? Would he like to be making these wide open shots? Yes, but his sure. value is toughness. His value is defense. His value is not scoring. That's the other guy's job. And so I am not hitting the panic button on that. Not at all. How about Eddie? Tim Hardaway Jr., lowest field goal percentage in threes of his career. Panic? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's another one of the guys on the Mavs who – a lot of these shots are wide open. Luca creates great shots for these guys. That system creates great shots. He he has to be making these. He's on an insane contract that is going to be really hard for them to trade. Same with Davis Bertans. Um, he's coming off a ton of injuries. He's been injury prone the last couple of years. Yeah, you, you, you got to panic. Absolutely for them. They need him to be, play way better than he's playing. Steven, <laughs> I just figured out that that was the panic button. Uh, Steven Adams with the lowest free throw percentage by a lot, by the way, it's just over 27 and a half percent Chandler. I like, I feel like I could do that. Do the Grizzlies hit the panic button on this? Yeah, because this is hard to do. This is, this is very, very <laughs> hard to do. It's funny. I go, I golf with John Barry, the OG all the time. And I'm, <laughs> and I was talking to him and I said, guys like Steven Adams, Ben Simmons, Deandre Jordan, do they ever try and call your dad and go and just say and go underhand? Because at some point, this is wild. I would shoot 27.6 percentage left handed. Like Michelle, you would easily make Thank you. two or three out of 10. This I is agree. this is this is inexcusable. I don't care how big, I don't care the other value you do. You cannot be shooting 28% from the free throw line. This is wild and absurd. <laughs> and I would start going lefty. I would start going underhand. I would do anything other than what he's doing now. Anything. You almost have to By try way, to do that. <laughs> right? Like, I feel like that just would happen just by kind of aiming. I, I don't know. It's insane. Yeah, oh, it's taking fine. a quick break. Up next, I think we figured it out. It's your opportunity to bet against us and win. We might have figured out the pattern. We'll be right back. <laughs> Run it back, yeah. Run it all. The running back, yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Yeah. Good news and bad news. Uh, the bad news is we're over on these, but the good news is it means we're consistent. Okay, so four leg parlay time. I'm trying to find the silver lining. Eddie, give us your two legs. Go. All right, I got Nikola Jokic, <laughs> the reigning MVP, over 25 and a half points against the Rockets. I was expecting okay. a big game out of him. I like that. What else? Yeah. I mean, actually, I do uh, like that. I, That's doable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Look, we're starting off easy. <laughs> we're, we're still easy here. We're going Rudy Gobert under 13.5 points against the Wizards. Uh, I just have no faith in Rudy Gobert. I'm sorry uh, okay. to Minnesota people. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> under for him. Spam that. that. Like, what is that? That's a lock. All that. All those cool words. He's not scoring 14 points. There's no way. You can't You can't throw out it's a lock with the track record that we have. You just can't. Uh, Chandler, you, you got two legs for us. Yeah. Okay. My first <laughs> one is Raptors minus two and a half. Cleveland played last <laughs> night. Toronto's a tough place to play. I, I got to go with the home team on this one. Um, yeah, that's what I see happen. I think the Cavs I like that. Up last night. And then the Suns, I like minus one. Uh, the Suns are a better team. The Kings are kind of riding a high right now, but I think, you know, they got nothing for deep book tonight. And I think the Suns get it done. Okay, that one, it seems low actually on that one. I feel like Chandler's are good. I think the Rudy Gobert one, We, all, I'm telling you, we need a side bet which leg is the one that like torpedoes <laughs> us all. You bet 20 bucks, you get 223. I'm thinking it's the Gobert one, Chandler. That might get us. I think that might be the Jokic one because I don't think he'll play logs. I think they'll beat oh. them. Oh, I didn't think about that. Right. We can't night on Eddie. Back from a long from a long road trip, we're gonna be at, at one a.m. cursing at Chandler because he lost this money. So. <laughs> it's, the, it's the minus one that's like I feel like that's such a low number. Look, at some point we are gonna get one of these. Okay, it's just it's just simple math, statistically speaking. I don't know when it'll be. I don't even know if it'll be in this calendar year, guys. But I do appreciate I, I, that we keep trying. 
I love that we've blown them in every single way, and I don't think we've ever had three. I don't think we've ever been that close. So. We get to. Not even on the big ones. Uh, but you know what? This could be the day. Every day is a new day, new chances. Uh, that's it for us today. We're always on Monday through Wednesday, 10 Eastern, which means we will be back tomorrow. See you then.